All right, let's see who can answer this question correctly. What is the most funded terrorist organization in the world? This terror organization is also responsible for more deaths and more human rights violations than any other terror group. I'll give you a hint. America funds this terror organization. If you said the Ukrainian army, which has been committing war crimes against the people of Donbass since 2014, I give you kudos, very good guess, but it's not correct. The terrorist organization I'm referring to has been at work 75 long years and is still going strong thanks to the annual contribution of three and a half billion, with a B, dollars from America to buy weapons. And I don't dare call it defense spending because this terror organization is like a great NBA basketball team. Offense, offense, offense. When there's no need for defense when you're always attacking. This terror group is almost single-handedly responsible for the unrest and upheaval in the Middle East, outside of U.S. attacks and occupation, of course. This terror organization has not squandered U.S. financial support. No, 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 no. They've made the most of your tax dollars. It has the fourth largest military in the world, state-of-the-art missile system, and an estimated 400 nuclear warheads. They're not messing around. If you didn't know already, if you would guessed it from the beginning, the terror organization I'm referring to is the Israeli Army, or the IDF, Israel Defense Fund. Again, for reasons of being accurate, I don't like calling it defense when talking about Israel's military. And now Israel has just voted in the most extreme far-right government in its history, led by Benjamin Netanyahu. And this government has only one platform, ethically cleanse all Palestinians from their land and annex the West Bank. That's it. If you've been watching World News, no doubt you've seen the uproar about the visit of Israel's new National Security Minister, Itamar Ben-Gvir, to the al aqaeda Mosque, an intentional proclamation of hate that not only Palestinians, but the entire Middle East has condemned. But who is this foreign minister, Itamar Ben-Gvir? Here's a little information so you know what kind of guy he is. He's been charged over 50 times with hate and racism and convicted and served time. So a convicted racist, fascist of hate crimes is not behind bars, but instead one of the heads of your government. A good choice for the country's new national security minister. So it's no surprise in the first week of taking office, he's crossed a major red line in order to show the Palestinians that you're not welcome in your own land. This gesture has been followed by the announcement from Israel that 14 villages, home to some 1,000 Palestinians in the West Bank, were to be destroyed in the next month to make room for illegal Jewish settlers. Now, when I say illegal, I don't mean just disputed or just unethical that Israel is taking their land. No, I mean it's lawfully illegal under international law. It's a war crime. The United Nations has condemned this land theft. They've passed over 35 resolutions for Israel to halt displacing Palestinians and taking their land. And this theft and treatment of Palestinians are crimes according to the United Nations. Amnity International has officially registered Israel and is an apartheid state. The International Criminal Court wants to try Israel officials for war crimes for indiscriminate killing of Palestinian children. Zvika Vogel, an MP in the new Israel government, in a speech to the Knesset said, quote, we can't go to war with the Palestinians every two to three years. It's time to subdue them once and for all and make this the final war, unquote. He's openly calling for the extermination of a people, an Israel version of the final solution. This seems almost unbelievable that this could be happening in this day and age. Yes, Netanyahu is a fascist and his right-wing extremists in the government are ethically cleansing another people but this extends far beyond Israel's government. The citizens, the citizens, the people of Israel elected this government whose only platform of ridding the Holy Land of anyone not Jewish is greatly supported in Israel. The irony cannot be lost on the fact that the Jewish people, victims of the Nazis and one of the most notorious genocides in history, are now themselves the perpetrators of genocide against another people. How can this be? Surely they can't get away with this. The world isn't going to allow a repeat of the Holocaust. Well, while almost all countries were against fascism, Hitler, and the master race, the new fascists from Israel, God's chosen people, 
have a very powerful ally, the United States, and who financially support Israel, overlook their crimes against humanity, and shield them from UN sanctions and consequences. It's no exaggeration to say Israel can do as it pleases, including literal genocide with having no consequences. I've heard many times the argument that Israel is supported by the U.S. and it tolerates its human rights clients because the U.S. needs Israel as an ally in the Middle East because of all the problems there have been going on for years. But let me say, there have been no major problems in the Middle East before the creation of Israel. Israel operates in the shadows to keep its crime hidden from the world. Filming IDF soldiers is illegal. Recording night raids of Palestinian homes, arrests of children, killing of children, the shooting of journalists will be met with prosecution, while the perpetrators, those actually committing these acts of violence, continue with no inhibition. Israel refuses to sit before the International Crimes Court to answer for crimes against humanity, courtesy of Americans' veto power. Israel refuses to sign the Nuclear Proliferation Agreement or even acknowledge having atomic weapons, despite it being common knowledge they possess several hundred nuclear warheads. And of course, of course, when these truths are pointed out, when the videos emerge, the witnesses testify, the truth is in plain sight and becomes impossible for Israel to deny, then the Zionists pull, go to the go-to card and say, you're anti-Semitic. Let me in on a little secret Israel doesn't want to get out. Palestinians are Semites too. Palestinians are Semites. So is it being anti-Semitic to point out the ethnic cleansing of the genocide of Palestinians who are Semites? I didn't think so. Israel doesn't like to be compared to former apartheid South Africa, and I'm actually gonna to have to agree with them on this point. South Africa was an apartheid state with different rules, laws, and privileges for whites. Israel goes above and beyond racism against Palestinians and special privileges for Jews. Israel is ethically cleansing Palestinians from the West Bank with land theft, imprisonment, indiscriminate killings, and in Gaza is nothing short of genocide. Israel has bombed Gaza into rubble and they don't lend in humanitarian aid, restrict less food into Gaza than is needed to sustain the population, the UN calls Gaza the world's largest outdoor prison and said Gaza would be unlivable by 2022. Well, it's 2023. What do you call it when a people are herded into the desert? A wall is built on one side with the ocean on the other and they're only allowed to go 50 meters from shore. All infrastructure has been destroyed by Israel fighter planes. Necessities for life, including medical, food, are blocked from entering. 94% of all fresh water unsafe to drink because the water distillation plant has been destroyed by Israel. It's called a slow, methodical genocide. Israel has a lot more in common with Nazi Germany than they do with apartheid South Africa. Would you rather be forced into a prison camp, starved and then gassed by the master race, or forced into an outdoor prison on the desert, starved and bombed by God's chosen people? The first is known as the Holocaust, one of the darkest moments in human history. The second is business as usual for Israel, a terrorist organization disguised as a country.